When you want to spawn objects randomly around a level, you can use the Object Spawner script. This script is found in Assets, Scripts, Utility. The Object Spawner script works alongside the Cull Object script, which will hide the spawned object unless a certain culling target, which in most cases will be your player, is within a certain range. To demonstrate how this works, I'll create a new empty game scene. I'll create an empty game object, which I will call the spawner. This will be our parent game object, which will hold all of the spawned game objects. We'll attach the object spawner to the spawner game object. You'll notice that a box collider is added to the spawner object. The size of the box collider is the bounds of which spawning will take place. So in our case, all spawning will take place within this 50 by 50 by 50 box. The object spawner script takes several parameters. The object spawn prefabs is an array of game objects that will be spawned. In this case, we'll create three empty game objects, or three basic primitives. We'll set their position to be outside our scene view, and then we'll attach them, or we'll specify them as as our elements for the object spawn prefabs array. Number to spawn is the total number of objects to be spawned by the object spawner. Note that the object spawner will choose randomly from these three game objects, but will spawn a total of 10. So you'll have 10 random, you'll have 10 game objects that are a random assortment of either a cube, sphere, or a capsule. The minimum distance between spawns is a parameter that specifies the minimum world space units that must be between each game object. Because our box collider bounds in this example are 50 by 50 by 50, most game objects will likely be greater than 10 units apart. The culling target is a game object that must have a collider and a rigid body. In this example, we'll create, we'll create a basic cylinder object. We'll reset its position and then we'll add a rigid body. We'll turn off gravity so it doesn't fall at the start of the game. Then, we'll set the cylinder as our culling target. This means that if the cylinder is within the within a certain distance of each spawned object, then that spawned object will display. But if it is not within a certain distance, the cull object script that will be attached to each spawned object will hide that game object. The hide spawn object distance is the distance that the culling target must be in order for the spawn game object to display. Let's go ahead and generate our spawns. You'll notice upon start that the spawner has generated 10 objects. But you'll notice that some of these objects are not displayed. In this case, this object's mesh renderer is not shown. You'll notice that each spawned object has a sphere collider. This sphere collider is equal, or the size of this sphere collider is equal to the hide spawned object distance. And if our culling target, our cylinder, is not within this sphere, the object will not be shown. For example, this cube is not shown because our cylinder is not within close enough distance. If we move our cylinder around, You'll notice that some objects will be displayed while others will be hidden. I'll set rigid body in an is trigger. This way we don't have any weird physics collisions going on. But as you'll notice, when I move around our cylinder, some objects are shown while others are hidden. This is how the cull object script works and is efficient use of memory if you have to spawn a large number of game objects throughout your game world.